And malungkot nga po ako nung isang beses, nung nagbigay po siya ng talumpati, ako po ay may mga bisita ng mga barangay captain. Hindi po ako nakapakinig doon sa baba, pero nakapakinig po ako sa aking uh, opisina. Napakaganda po ng uh, uh, gustong mangyari ng ating mahal na senador. Alam niyo po, hindi naman po ito bago sapagkat ito po ay nasa konstitusyon natin. Ito po ay nasa uh, artikulo uh, labing apat, uh, seksyon uh, pito at walo, na sinasabi po doon, maliwanag na sinasabi. Uh, ito nga po, ah, marami salamat. Uh, ukol sa mga layunin ng komunikasyon at pagtuturo, ang mga wikang opisyal ng Pilipinas ay Filipino. At hanggat walang ibang itinatadhana ang batas, Ingles. Ang mga wikang pangrehiyon ay pangtulong ng mga wikang opisyal sa mga rehiyon at magsisilbi na pangtulong ng mga wikang pangturo. At ito pa po ang aming pinagpapasalamat sa aming uh, mahal na senador. Dapat itaguyod ng kusa, sunal ng Kastila, Arabic, Allah Akbar. At dito naman po sa Section 8, ang konstitusyon ito ay dapat ipahayag sa Filipino at Ingles at dapat isalin sa mga pangunahing wikang pangrehiyon Arabic at Kastila. Kaya sa konstitusyon pa lamang po, napakaliwanag na na uh, ang atin pong uh, mga dialect, ang atin pong mga language, Uh, binibigyan po sana natin ng halaga yung Filipino bago yung Ingles at uh, yun din pong mga sinasabing sa mga lugar na ipinaglalaban po ng ating uh, mahal na senador na si Win Gatsalian. Sana po uh, maging maliwanag po sa ating lahat kung paano po natin to i-implement dahil alam nyo mga mahal kong kababayan ang pag-asa ng bayan ay ating mga kabataan. At mangyayari lamang yan kung naiintindihan tayo ng ating mga kabataan. At kaya nga yan ang tawag mother tongue. Eh, mother. Ang liwanag. Ibig sabihin eh, kahit naka, siguro yan, naiintindihan niya. Kasi mother tongue. At sana po, uh, ma-implement po natin ito at matulungan po natin ang ating mahal na senador na Sherwin Gatsalian sa kanya pong mga Uh, advokasya patungkol dito. Maraming salamat po, Senador. Maraming salamat, uh, Senator Robin. Uh, kung ako po ay Einstein sa mga iba't ibang paksa, kaya po ay Einstein sa love life. <laughs> kaya kayo po ang idol ko pagdating doon. <laughs> Kidding aside, uh, let me also uh, ask if uh, Senator Pia has uh, any opening statements. Senator Pia? Very short um, opening statement, uh, Mr. Chairman. Good morning. Good morning sa inyo lahat, Senator Robin, uh, and all our resource persons, Father Nebres. Um, ang sa akin, my intervention today will simply be as Chairman of the Committee on Sustainable Development Goals, Innovation, and Futures Thinking. It is our job to prepare the children for the future. And we need to prepare them with 21st century skills. That's communication, collaboration, being able to work in different environments, ability to adapt. And language is very central to this. So when we talk today about the mother tongue and uh, how we are ensuring that our children understand what we're teaching them, we also have to look into the future. What is the world that they need to be prepared for? When I was a child, uh, it's not common to be communicating Uh, in other with other countries hindi hindi walang viber walang tiktok walang facebook walang online job applications uh, you can't just go online and see that there's just job opportunities available literally magpapadala ng telegram so today uh, i know uh, i i was just in bohol yesterday i was in cebu three days ago and there's so many filipinos i'm so happy of this and other we've both been in the senate for quite some time now I would say around the time we started, na una ako ng a few years ago, uh, we're always talking about call centers. Call centers, uh, uh, sorry, we're talking about migrant workers and then the Filipinos who don't have to leave, they work in call centers. 
in centers. But today, and partly uh, because of the changing times and the pandemic, people don't even have to go to the call center. They can work from home. And there are more and more jobs available. I was ako when I talk to young people, they're able to find these jobs all over the world and they're living at home. They're, they're with their loved ones, they're with their families. We're creating jobs here at home. But their ability to do that is because of the English language. I love the mother tongue. Kabalo ko, mag, kabalo ko magbisaya. Uh, pwede rin ako mag-ilongo. And of course, I speak Filipino. Um, but they're not going to get jobs from speaking Filipino. So that's... That's the only thing I need to be part of this discussion is how do we ensure that as they embrace their mother tongue, they learn from the language they know at home, we're preparing for the future. And the future is not is speaking the top languages in the world. It could be English, it could be Spanish, it could be Mandarin, those are the three top languages. But obviously, it's English that I So that's the kind of discussion I'd also like to hear. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you, Senator Pia, for the opening statement. Uh, as we have furnished everyone on the uh, topic for today, we have three topics that we will discuss. Uh, this was um, uh, furnished to our resource persons and to our senators. Uh, number one is uh, PS Resolution Number 5, and the title of this resolution, uh, Resolution Directing the Senate Committee on Basic Education, Arts and Culture to Conduct an Inquiry in Aid of Legislation on the Status of the Implementation of the K-12 Law for the Purpose of crafting policy recommendation and initiating complementary, complementary and mandatory legislation to further strengthen the law and ensure its effective and efficient integration into Philippine basic education system to provide quality education and achieve global competitiveness. But this will, this resolution will focus on mother tongue and the implementation of mother tongue uh, for today. Uh, another bill that was. Uh, um, transmitted to us, and it's a subject of discussion today, is House Bill number 6717. And the title of this uh, House Bill, an act suspending the implementation of the use of mother tongue as the medium of instruction for kindergarten to grade three, provided under section four of Republic Act number 10533, otherwise known as the Enhanced Basic Education Act of 2013. Uh, this is um, transmitted to us last February 20, 2023, authored by uh, Representative Romolo and um, other congressmen. The first resolution, PS Resolution Number 5, is authored by yours truly, uh, just to put that on record. And lastly, um, a privileged speech um, that was given in plenary. And the title of this privileged speech, Observations on the Implementation of the Mother Tongue-Based Multilingual Education Program, Theory versus Implementation. That was given by yours truly uh, last May 31, 2023, and that was uh, mentioned by Senator Robin uh, uh, in his opening remarks. So these are the three items that we will be discussing today, ladies and gentlemen. And as an opening remark, um, we live in one of the most beautiful countries in the world, and we all admit that, and we all acknowledge that. Uh, it's, the Philippines is beautiful not only because of its 7,100 islands, but because of its diverse culture and diverse traditions. And uh, part of that diversity is its diverse language. And we acknowledge that language is our connection to our rich heritage as well as our rich history. And uh, I'm in support in uh, coming up with laws, mechanisms, and even programs to preserve our diverse culture, tradition, and language. But having said that, uh, the application of language to education, especially to the medium of instruction, is not without challenges. We all know. That's why we're here. And uh, during the first um, hearing, we all... Um, uh, uh, witnessed and appreciated the complexity of applying uh, uh, the diverse um, uh, diverse uh, language um, scenario in our country to our education system, especially for medium of instruction. So uh, in my privileged speech, I mentioned that um, I will... Uh, um, I will reserve my recommendation uh, pending uh, hearing all of the comments, uh, the expert advice, as well as 
researches as well as uh, evident pieces of evidence that will show us and educate us how to move forward with mother tongue and the application of mother tongue as well as the implementation of mother tongue. Uh, in my speech, I specifically um, mentioned that I will not make any definitive conclusion until I see pieces of evidence, researches, and of course hear the comments of experts. Um, and that's why we're here right now, today, you know, to, to go deeper into the discussion of uh, the concepts of mother tongue as well as the implementation of mother tongue. And also bear in mind that uh, it's been 10 years since we implemented mother tongue. No? Um, so we will also want to understand and appreciate uh, the outcomes uh, of this policy change uh, is, uh, uh, since 2013. So with that, um, just as a recap, uh, updates from the DepEd, no? um, because it, we, we uh, requested um, DepEd, last time DepEd made some presentation, but we requested DepEd to give us some, uh, to pursue um, some updates no? on uh, data gathering, no? because apparently, uh, for example, the on implementation, um, uh, I think uh, the last study was 2018 uh, that was conducted by PIDS. So during the last hearing, we requested DepEd if they can uh, update that uh, uh, four minima uh, requirements. And um, we also understand from DepEd that they conducted a rapid assessment on the implementation of MTBMLE. And, and I understand last time that that was still being collated. So, um, so the last hearing was October. It's already June right now. So uh, we've given DepEd uh, eight months to put that together. So uh, we want to get some updates from DepEd whether uh, there are any improvements on the four minimum requirements from 2018, and what was the results? What was the result of the rapid assessment that was conducted by DepEd? 